In attempt to hide his location, Zweihard extinguishes his forge. He then prepares his spells to aid him in the coming invasion. So when the Cyclops tries to enter the forge, Zweihard is ready and unleashes all his dwarven fury. The Cyclops changes his strategy and comes to block up the entrance of the forge. Zweihard keeps up the assault, trying to stop the Cyclops from blocking up the entrance. Sale must have been smiling on him as he decapitates the goblin and drives the Cyclops into the hills. He returns to his forge to complete his work now that the canyon is secure once more and crafts a steel battle axe. He then heads to the coal mine to resupply. Fortunately, seeing no sign of the ooze and is able to go back to his forge to start working on a helm. With a beautiful helm complete, he shuts down and secures the forge and returns to his family. On his return, he finds his father has been fatally injured in a mine accident and does not have long. After speaking to his father, Zweihard informs his brother of the looming hobgoblin threat and he is charged with crafting the soon-to-be king a fine battle-axe so he can start a crusade against the foul creatures. He is given access to the forge and assigned an assistant, Brunhilde, to aid in his work. During the following days, Zweihard's father passes, but he crafts a masterful axe to present to his brother as a coronation gift. How will the thing of thanes go? What is behind the hobgoblin threat? What item will Zweihard forge next? Let's find out now on Dicing with Death. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dyson with Death. Ryan, how are you doing today? I am doing well. How about yourself, Neil? I am quite well indeed. Yeah? Yeah. Well rested? No. 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 Still it's, not. It's been beautiful summer nights, and I really wanted to... What, uh, what, what about the mornings, Neil? Are the, are the summer mornings beautiful? I wouldn't know. I haven't seen a morning in a while. <laughs> But the beautiful summer nights, I wanted to, to sleep outside because we can. We've got this like dangly, um, sort of like a, a circular hammock sort of thingy that dangles outside. And it's perfect pretty, for sleeping. Cool. Yeah. You have we like got a, blankets and pillows like in there. Or it's just on our balcony. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's a little too small. Uh, I'm a little too long to comfortably sleep on it all night. So <laughs> I spent from like 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. Maybe from 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. sleeping outside very uncomfortably, but it was really nice, but super uncomfortable. <laughs> and so somewhere around maybe maybe it was actually 8 a.m. is when I got back up and then came inside and fell asleep and slept right through everything else. Slept right through your whole life. It happens. Slept, yep. Yep. It's like that movie click. The not not familiar, but I'll take your you word know, for it. You know, it's one of Adam Sandler's less awful works. Um, <laughs> but I, pretty awful ones. I know. I wouldn't go so far as to say good works, but less awful works. Interesting <laughs> concept. <laughs> uh, uh, well, yeah. Um, I Are suppose you... we can hop right into it, unless uh, I don't know. Yeah, so, let's let's yeah, talk about this thing of things. Do you have any other mediocre movies to uh, to chip the chat about? Oh, I, dude, we I just think... watched Cannibal Women and the Avocado Jungle of Death. Holy that's, shit! That's it was the, amazing. That's the name of a movie, Cannibal Can... Women, and this in is the like, Avocado Jungle of Death. And just so that's you know, like this, that's like my subconscious. Like if my subconscious were writing a. Uh, I don't know. That's that's everything I need out of life, except I'm, I'm guessing it what it's not what I. Uh, no, it's amazing. It's so good. <laughs> it's so terribly good. 
Uh, and all of Southern California is the giant avocado jungle of death with rivers and lakes. And, you know, it's a jungle and a rainforest filled with avocado trees. Uh, and which cannibal of course, women. And cannibal women. Yes, they're called the piranha women. And then there's like another tribe of other women. And uh, it's great. It's fantastic. I, it's, I see. I don't think it is. The The name uh, has it's got a lot to live up to, I guess. Uh, uh, it has it, one of Bill Maher's earlier performances as an actual actor instead of as a stand up or a um, whatever. Is this like an old? This is like film? a film from the 80s or 90s. How, yeah. did I, how have I never heard of this? Okay. Because it's pretty like the budget is like 50 bucks for the whole film. It's amazing. <laughs> it's great. I highly recommend it for you. Uh, just, you know, be prepared for like oh, really bad 80s yeah. social commentary. Is it, like, in, like avocado orchards and literally like they're, they're walking through an avocado orchard and you can see like the nice neat rows and they're like, we're on the outskirts of the jungle. It yeah. just gets <laughs> thicker from here. And you're like, that's someone's yard. It's <laughs> uh, like a well tended row of uh, avocado bearing trees. Yeah. And then eventually they do get to like and more then the women jump out. This is just like my childhood. I'll, yeah. I have to. Yeah, it, I have to find it now. You should find it. Uh, just be prepared for like a lot of bad, but good bad stuff. It's great. Anyway, that's that's the entirety of my existence. I've been reveling in that movie for days now. Um, any updates from you before we hop into Zwei Harding? I, I live a whole lot more life than you, but I, I, I we don't got time to talk at all. I'll, Oh, uh, so your life is so cool and interesting, but like there's no know. time I for mean, it. I see. We missed Fro. We missed Fro Fro because I was in Walla Walla, like Eastern Washington, this weekend. Erin had her band camp there all week. I don't know. Rowing this morning. Ah, that's why you're up so early every morning, you bastard. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, does the rowing team not mind having an old man on it? <laughs> 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 you're funny yeah. i'm also it's right a, apparently <laughs> it's a club team so it's like so it's not like i'm not like rowing with the with the uw husky team if that, if that's you're, <laughs> you're not rowing with a bunch no, of freshmen no so it's okay i don't know i'm not the oldest but i'm certainly yeah nothing there's like a 70 i don't want i don't oh. want to presume her age and an elderly woman who uh Rose this sometimes. I think she's like faculty or something like that, staff, or maybe like retired. I don't yeah, I don't know what the Wow. So uh so uh I'm uh So you're like the pretty... second oldest I'm... then. <laughs> <laughs> Not even okay. all right. All right, all right, all right. Uh where do we leave off? Did you f- you finished making a an axe for your older brother? And he tested it by hurling it across the yard at a wall, and it worked. Um, mm-hmm. He dinged off one of the one of the charges, one of the one of the sh- sharpness sharp charges. Yeah, put a little dent in it. But it's that's all right. It's uh, I've handed it over to an NPC. It is in the GM's hands now, so it will suddenly be. Uh, I don't know. It'll be taken care of. <laughs> well taken uh, care of. Yeah, um, I do need to mark mithril for the inlay on that axe. Mm-hmm. I have nine mithril pieces currently. How many of those were used up in the in that battle axe? That we didn't do this already. No, we did the main iron for the blade, but the the whole mithril inlay was an right. afterthought, and I just realized I didn't. Um, so why don't you mark that. off? Um, let's see, mithril is pretty large, fairly light, so one coin goes a long way. So maybe one coin for each side, one yeah. coin for each moon is maybe a, I'd probably just hammer down a mithril coin to make the moons or whatever. Yeah, let's do and two then, coins. Cool. Um, how much, are, how valuable are mithril in terms of gold? Uh... Uh, they are 20 times the price of gold. 20, so that's 40 <laughs> gold. Okay, that's still not much. Yeah. Still probably not worthy of, uh, like, ma- yeah, I, not like enchantable quality, right? Not in and of itself, but you're, 
you're you're getting towards there. You know, you're you're making good mm-hmm. progress. How much? I mean, most of the value is in the craftsmanship, is it not? Probably, uh, yeah. until you start adding mithril, and then it's probably a little bit of both. You know. Cool, cool. Uh, so what's uh, what are we? What's what's going on? Well, the the dwarves uh, have mourned the loss of their thing, mm-hmm. father. And uh, I think we left off last week with like the uh, we did the whole the there was a coronation. It wasn't exactly there wasn't really a coronation, but we know. But there was a Left, switching We ended, scene. I think, last time with the presentation of this of the battle axe. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, this week we will start with the other thanes showing up. All the other people under the black steel super flag. Yeah. Okay, so I think we can time skip to there. Uh, how many yeah. days are we gonna? Is, oh, I think it's gonna be like five days or something. Maybe a week. Right. Whatever. Okay. Um, I'm at eighteen out of twenty-seven. I have a con of one, so if it's a week, I would gain eight. You have a con of 15. 26, yeah, yeah, a con of 15, con bonus okay. of one. Although I assume, am I under the, care, can I be under the care of, am I in, like, Yes, there's a healer here who will take care of okay. you. Okay, so I can gain several HP a day and get yeah. back up to full. Yeah. In well enough time. And I think I'm probably just resting, actually, right? I've been forging pretty, uh, mm-hmm. pretty hard for, uh, Couple of days. Mm-hmm. I think I rolled pretty damn well. Got it. Well, there were some, there were some flubs along the way. Yeah, but it, it's more or less been a good day of or a good time of weapon crafting yeah, for you. I think that's a pretty epic axe. Like I think mm-hmm. it, it. Oh, and steel's really valuable in this universe too. I think mm-hmm. that's got to be like a that's that's like a enchantable. I don't. I didn't. I erased it from my character sheet when I presented it. But I, the stat. It's. I have it. All I have. I have the stats written down. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right, it's like a plus one to hit, plus. So I guess it's kind of semi, mm-hmm. semi enchanted. Yeah, bless. I would call it a blessed blade. I don't know if I. I did cast a bless spell over the presentation, but mm-hmm. that. Uh, anyways, yeah. What were the stats on it? It was, it was a thirty hardness, so uh, hmm. die critical die or one larger. It was 25 flexibility, so plus one on saves. It was 32 on balance, so you only need to clear by eight for a critical hit. And it just has a plus one to hit in general. Um, and the last, idiot. a 30 sharpness. Chucks too many walls. Yeah, 30 yeah. sharpness means 10 plus one damage charges. Oh, um, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's sweet. I'm it's, kinda... a, it's a great axe. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm kind of torn on having uh, handed that away, but uh, such is the life of a, of a craftsman. Yep, yep. And uh, your brother's a, more or less a good guy, you know? He's going to mm-hmm. lead all these dwarves off to fight all these hobgoblins. And Is that really what it seems like the plan is? So we've been, I mean, we're glossing over a week here. Is that mm-hmm. really the feel around the... Uh, oh, yeah. That's... Around the keep? They're, like, gearing up for war with the with the orcs? Uh, the um, hobgoblins, but yes. The hobgoblins. Oh, the hobgoblins. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, so this is unrelated to my news. Unrelated right? to your news. Uh, mm-hmm. The hobgoblins are, it's time for their extermination. They're, they're ridding, they're being rid of, uh, you know, scouring the Hendrikos Hills and wiping them all out. Because they're is, problematic. They're, they're annoying. They're raiding and attacking and killing dwarves. And there's been a long period of amnesty this, between them. And the is this really a prudent... First action for a new uh, king to take. A well, new, everyone's uh, got a what's, more what's, what's my brother's title? Thane. Thane. Every Thane has to prove their courage and get everyone to respect them. You know, people who new administrations often take drastic first steps to. Okay. To right, well, so okay, I think it's why set I their place speak. in history. Uh, are you has his casting... private thoughts on the matters, but. You casting I'm doubts on your brother's abilities? No, I don't think I would vocalize any of this, but internally, sure. Mm. Especially, right, because, like, I, I mean, I, I, it seemed to me like if any of the Eastern 
tribes are uh, are a threat as the orcs with uh, you know, forging weapons of war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but your brother seems more concerned about these uh, hobgoblins who don't seem to be forging anything. Well, they were running mithril, right? So that's certainly that's, curious. There's something so going on. I'll yeah. probably, am I, ta- I guess we'll, do we know what a plan is or is it like, how does this go? Like we need to call the, the faints together. Right. So for the week make, that you're resting, make, you see various groups arriving. It'll be like a fade and their closest uh, bodyguards and comrades. Okay. Uh, and you you can overhear the chatting and you can you'll spend time with your brother and you'll see him blo- pouring over maps that have like suspected hobgoblin caves marked and you know getting reports from scouts that say well no we've checked out this one there's nothing there or this one's long abandoned or um, this one looks heavily armed and we didn't get, couldn't get too close or these scouts haven't returned and uh, so there's definitely like the preparations but. I don't know if this is curious to you or this is what you would expect. Your brother hasn't really involved you directly in any of these preparations. It's kind of like he's preparing to go to war and he's going to leave you at home over the course of it. Really? Uh, yeah. I, mean, I guess that is a bit of a surprise. Yeah. Because certainly the, the we would serve separate, like, different roles in the uh, in dwarven society. But... Uh, but he's sort of kind of leaving you out of these things. He's like getting all of his warriors together. Sure, and then sure. he's just but like associating just think, with you on the side. That would have given the impression that I wouldn't be ta- coming along. Because, I mean, Zweihard's mind is like, oh, okay, like waging war against the Hobgoblins, whatever. New new Thane's got to do what a new Thane's got to do. Yeah. But considering the mithril that I uh, intercepted, I would mm-hmm. be keen to, you know, travel along. Right. And surely be... Uh, useful in the campaign right but you'll like wake up one day and start <laughs> making your way through the keep and find that he's holding a meeting about the invasion with a bunch of other thanes and they're all like talking about what they're gonna do and you're like, and I'm like where oh, was my I invitation realize, uh, yeah. these guys got here but that's i mean thanes meeting i i think i'm st- it still sounds to me like i'm planning on going along like i and okay. it, unless there's been anything direct to uh, indicate the contrary it, it seems like it wouldn't be like I'm not. I'm certainly not the person who would stand who would guard the home, right? I mean, I've been away for years. I'm, am I? Are there? Is there any success? Is, is there anyone in line to the throne between Einhard and Zweihard? Uh, Einhard is a it's, married man, but he has, as of yet, have no children. So uh, technically, you would be heir to the throne if he perishes yeah. but you know they're, they're working on it all right dwarf gestation periods are kind of long and yeah. their large bellies make it difficult to show when these things happen so a dwarf might not realize that they're pregnant until like halfway through the pregnancy very easily um you know a little oh it's a little gift from say or how wonderful that sort of thing you know <laughs> All right. Interesting. Okay. Is there no like Castellan or what's what's the dwarf second in command? Who is who is the? Mm. There was a guy at the talking with Einard like at the in the last episode. Like what with the? Uh, I think that was the the captain of his guard. Yeah, there's a captain of the guard. Is that his? Is that his title? Some dwarf Uh, term for it? Yeah. No, the the Castilian. There would be a separate Castilian, Mm -hmm. right? Is I don't know. I'm asking. I'm asking you. In like yes, there is a Castilian. It is not the captain of the guard. Uh, your family's Castilian is it, uh, kind of an aged dwarf. He's held the position for like a hundred and twenty years, mm-hmm. uh, and he's up there in dwarf age. He's like it's like two hundred and eighty or something. Okay. But it's, I mean, but it's fun. like that's his. So it's it's his job probably to. I mean, I assume right to watch over the keep while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe not. I um. I do. I have. I do have augury, but I probably can't pull together. What is the how much? A thousand GP. I do not think I have such resources. Are are these sorts of things available in the keep somewhere? Which sorts of things? 
uh, material components for an augury spell. Uh, and the material oh, components God. are a uh, thousand GP value of a t of divining tokens. The examples they give are gem inlaid sticks and dragon bones. Uh, so yes. like casting of the bones. Like so, it would be a it's probably. Is there In, some? Yes, there is a a temple here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a generalist temple to all the gods, but of course, Seor holds like a slightly bigger position because you know dwarves forging love them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and within the temple are a, some augury um, tokens that are used by the clerics there. As one of the uh, heads of the family, of the ruling family, and as a cleric of Seo yourself, you have access to these tokens, but they are property of, like, this temple and shouldn't be, like, taken out and run around the countryside. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as you're here, you can go ahead and use them. Was I involved in the clergy at in? So there's a temple in. Uh, Temples may be a strong word. In iron, what is that? In Blacksteel Keep. So yeah. Blacksteel Keep is not a mapped city or anything. It's just no. a, it's just our uh, family's fortress out here in the hills. Right, right, and in one of the underground chambers uh, is the old temple. You know, the, you black still keep so, has been here for a very, very long time for many hundreds of sure. years. Is there a cleric that is like responsible for this or is it like a, a, uh, a, I mean, there's a, there's a chapel, but no, no one in charge of it. Uh, there's a priest in charge. There's a priest in charge. Yeah. Okay. In, in days past, there may have been a cleric, but did I, would I have, so would I have, uh, done training with him or uh, would, I, would so, my religious education have been at dwarf, the dwarf Academy? No, your religious education would have been here. Um, okay. It's a priestess, so I, so this, actually, not a priest. An elderly priestess here. Okay. Uh, so you would have trained with her for... Yeah, she was probably like my tutor for growing up. Yeah, so I, when people yeah. realized that there was something a little special about Zweihard, mm -hmm. when... I don't know if he's... I mean, he's looking at his stats. He's not actually that special. No, right? yeah, I mean, but I, when you start speaking... When you started speaking about Sayor early on as a child and started saying things that were true but probably a child shouldn't know and they started people I mean, started to realize like you had a, a direct connection on yeah. some level yeah i mean maybe like a natural uh an aptitude for for making things right yeah you know, and you a, just happen to know things that probably you would have needed to be taught you know maybe or i mean but also i was taught them i mean and there's yeah. right this right as a proper dwarf lordling right and i was not uh not first and first of right the einard would have been groomed for leadership right and there's that older Second brother son, or maybe third son <laughs> third son <laughs> right we we don't we don't have your name of your second your your middle brother the mm -hmm. older brother who disappeared above you I think it was Einard, right? And well, there was, 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 was there they, was it they, Einard, they Einard, and then they went Zweihard. Right? They, they were like uh, the current current Einard. I, I don't know which was actually older to begin with, but one right was there an mm -hmm. older older? Like I, I think no no no. Uh, so current Einhard, current ruler is your okay. oldest brother. Then there's one that disappeared during okay. their coming of age ceremony, and then there's you. Uh, we don't have a name for that middle brother, and we don't know how many younger siblings there are, but. Mm -hmm. uh, you definitely lost one sibling okay. during the coming. Don't, don't, I don't know what his name is. We probably don't talk about him. Yeah. Um. Anyways. Okay. Excellent. So. Um, okay. Um. So. So I know that. Do we want to give? Do we want to make this a character, or can we just say that I can go down and borrow? You can go down and borrow components from That's this fine. priestess. Yes. And I feel. I mean, are you keeping notes of like the? The uh, the keep. Should I keep notes of these characters? How do you? I'm keeping notes of characters, but you should keep any yeah. notes that you want for yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just thinking this is probably. I mean, I'm a, yeah. If you're talking important people in the keep, right? There's now now I. I mean, there's Thane, there's captains of the guard, and then there's like the priest. Mm hmm. Anyways, okay, so. Whatever. I will. Uh, I will go down into the into the keep and see the see the priestess and you know request. Uh, what what are they? Are, are they probably is it like some weighted metal things like that? Some weighted right? Like uh, actually, they are the bones of an ancient ancestor of yours. 
who dwarf first bones settled are, are a, a thousand GP dwarf bones, or are they inlaid with gems? They, they're or metal? inlaid with things, and they're ceremonial. And but they're like a thousand year old dwarf bones of the first black steel member to found hmm. black steel keep uh, of like your greatest ancestor here. And so it's a combination of um, finger bones, phalanges, and the skull itself. And the priestess who showed you how to augury with them showed that you take the skull, turn it upside down, put the phalanges in there, shake about, and then slam the skull down and lift the head up and see how the bones laid. Um, so there are these... Uh... Some, uh, some shit. Yeah, they're, they're these Quite. ancient bones that have been, you know, reinforced and fixed with uh, metal over t the years. Um, they're invaluable because they're ancient ancestor here. That's their their real value. Um, you could make a facsimile by using really expensive material components, but your ancestors watch over you, and the greatest of the black steels, the original black steel. Um, is here to help you with your auguries. Oh, right. Yeah, so I think it's probably like painted with, with with steel, right? That's maybe inlaid with gems or whatever to make the value up to a thousand GP. It's probably all rusted by this point, right? I mean, with steel, it's going to corrode. Well, part of the thousand. job of the priestess is to care for these ancient mm. relics. and So it's like polished them. ancient steel. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Maybe they have to periodically like re cast it or touch it up or something but mm -hmm. all right i will uh i'll cast the bones then this is probably like the day the thing that like the, this, the day of the thing right because mm -hmm. it seems like the thanes have been showing up and meeting privately with einhard or not mm -hmm. privately but all the thanes have been hanging out prior to the actual there's probably a thing scheduled for mm -hmm. the, the end of this week mm -hmm. so if it can be like the day before whenever i would have thought of that or finish finish resting feel ready to memorize uh or to pray for uh Pray for an augury. I still probably got my daily rituals of like I think we had, I think I had said it was like caring for my equipment, mm -hmm. but in a slow, methodical, inefficient, uh, ritualistic way. Right, the morning prayers. Right, even if my uh, you know my helmet doesn't need polishing, mm -hmm. or, could, or it can always right. It always needs polishing. Right. And the, it can, it can and never the, be the, too polished, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, so, And when you wear right through it, you just forge a new one. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's I'll, how you... Uh, I'll, that's, go ahead, go ahead. All right, uh, uh, so I'll pray for an augury spell and then head down to the basement, borrow these bones, and cast them. I think... Is there a chance? Or, uh, yes. so this the, is like the, the day, priestess the, Emma the thing. is there for you. and uh, She sees you coming and... Really? We're going to go with Emma again? Was did we? I, what, no, the other one was Hilda, right? No, oh, Emma was was the priestess in in Misty Rapids. Sh okay, well, you're I, awful. With, you're the worst at names. I mean, you could we can <sighs> just do another priestess Emma. They, look, Emma's just, a great name. What's wrong with the name Emma? <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know, Neil. What do you you keep? I don't know. It's a, uh, never mind. Fine. Fine. I'll I'll come up with a different name. All right. Um. Uh, all right. You know. Face these are these names okay, are so not I've nearly as Germanic a, as I would have so expected. The, the thing I want to I want to ask so right, it's, it's got to be a future oh, within one half hour. So I guess I've got to do this morning of. So this all have memorized the morning of the thing, and then mm -hmm. before I before I am I even invited to the to the thing going on upstairs, or have I just like, everyone is invited and, to be a witness, and, um, okay. but you were invited to like the witness gallery and not the speaking gallery. Yeah, that's fine. That's mm -hmm. fine. Okay, um, we've renamed the priestess. Her new name is Johanna. Johanna. All right. Johanna of vacuum cleaner Mother, fame. Mother Johanna. Mm -hmm. Is she a priestess of all the gods or uh, some in particular? Uh, she is a general. She would actually be a sister. Mother would be referred uh, as reserved for clerics. So even so though you would be she's father. so even though she's my uh, she's my elder who gave me my uh, like train you know train me whatever was my she uh, would be your tutor, sister my, and you would be her father because of your okay. clerical abilities i was gonna say she still gotta call me daddy but i, I guess oh, we'll uh maybe not I, that word that's a maybe. that's a weird word i don't like that's that word <laughs> that's what i'm here for to make you feel weird thank you i feel weird um okay oh, so so a half hour before the thing 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to augury. And I want to, so I wanted to ask it like, well, I mean, so you, you basically just get vague results for the probable outcome. I was, so I was hoping to ask about if like, if I were to attend the, uh, or go, you know, to crusade as, uh, as, mm -hmm. as, uh, our lovely narrator put it, uh, with the, uh, with Einard, if that would result in weal or woe uh, for for myself and for the for the family, right? For for the Blacksteel clan. So you cast uh, got the a, bones. Yeah, I've got a base seventy plus one percent per level. So what level am I? Four, I think. So seventy-four percent chance. There we go. Yeah, and it's not. I mean, so the media. It's the so the thing. The, it's got to be within the next half hour. I mean, so really, I guess the event that it's foreseeing is like the meeting with the with, mm -hmm. the, with the Thames, the thing. But I think since the meeting's about this journey or this this uh, ex expedition, sure. I don't know what they're calling it. Yeah. Um. So, so like, the question you ask is, if I go to war, what what is the question that you ask? Um, yeah, I mean, if the clan, if the clans go to war, should I go with them, right? Will weal or woe result if, if I attend? Like, so I'm assuming that they're gonna, they're gonna be discussing plans for war upstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I'm trying to align myself, which side am I gonna fall and whatever debates so, they're gonna have, you know, if I go along with this, uh, with this campaign, will weal uh, or woe result? Like should, should if I you go I along go? with it, great destruction will result. <laughs> is, that, is that like in a good way or in a bad way? Right? Do I get a? Can I get that sort of sensation? Or is I it just mean, like... you're you're a fairly well educated person, Ryan. You you know how <laughs> prophecies go. You yeah. speak a, you <laughs> seek an oracle, and they will give you an answer with some vague mm -hmm. possible interpretations. How do you feel? this interpretation is. Whose destruction do these bones castings refer to? I think everyone's, right? The whole region. I think it sounds like a bad plan, right? I've seen, mm -hmm. you know, I stumbled upon the uh, orcish machinations of war, right? Mm -hmm. If we, it's like that, it's that bad. I flash back, I think, to that, uh, to the battle axe clack crashing into the wall right just, mm -hmm. all it does is chip the blade mm -hmm. so i mean that's kind of how these things go but it's it's a it's a bad plan right it's a bad smashing plan. yeah <laughs> smashing our dwarvish battle axe into the yeah would you make me iron a, wall to the east a yeah, wisdom wanna... check or willpower check for sure 29. Oh, beautiful. So not only is it saying that there is a great destruction will occur, but the way that the phalanges are positioned, uh, the there's uh, three of them, one that's kind of lying down and two that are all crossed on top of it, that are off on the, the right side of the, you know, the undercarriage of the skull here. And those are the, those are the signs that mean danger. Um, but you notice that it's all the way as far to the right of the skull as you could possibly get, um, which to you indicates that the source of this danger is in the far right side of your world, the far east of your world mm -hmm. um, is the source I, of great danger. Which I am probably maybe mistakenly assuming is the orcs, right? I'm thinking the far, I'm thinking like, okay, that's, yeah. It, it must be, you know, the the uh, orcish hordes mm -hmm. coming to war, but I don't know. Maybe out of character, there are probably some uh, <laughs> other threats one would imagine. <laughs> Could be many things. Um, all right, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chess so, talking about the axe. So the the holy symbol of Sayor is, is the uh, is the uh, hammer. The dwarven. Yeah. The, the the axe symbol I was talking about was like the my Einhard throwing you know testing out the new battle axe by throwing it against a wall. Mm -hmm. That was what I, that's that was what I was saying. Zwyard was flashing back to right. Mm -hmm. 
that seem to symbolize what's probably about to occur. You right? give this dwar- this you, young you... dwarf lord all this power, and he just like hurls at a wall recklessly and mm-hmm. seems happy with the results. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, just like in the you know dwarven dwarven soul or dwarven whatever dwarven dwarven body, the first dwarven bodies fell as sparks off of. Uh, Sayor's strikes. Mm-hmm. Sayor's, Sayor's, what, forging? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dwarven lives, like sparks off the edge of a battle axe. But such is the way things go sometimes. All right, I think I'm kind of resigned, actually, to sit as an observer of this thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. I probably go in and full... Uh, I guess I don't really have full regalia. I've got my like basic. Uh, oh, I mean, my still beat up bronze chainmail. So I don't know if I would go in armored and uh, and all that. I guess I'm just wearing dwarf clothes. Do we have like? You have dwarf uh, clothes on. Yes, that that is a thing. Clothes. Dwarf clothes. Please add yeah. one dwarf clothes to your character sheet. <laughs> Uh, I actually don't have clothes on my character sheet. That's how I've been saving weight. Is I've uh, <laughs> been, going, been going, going to Mando the whole the time. Mail. No, I mean I always assume that, that mail includes uh, the uh, padding underneath. Sure, sure. But, uh, That's uh, how you get that tough dwarven hide is you just let it chafe and pinch <laughs> and pull all the time. Are there like? clerical robes is that like a thing or or like yeah military uniforms like what is what's what uh they're like priestly robes but you're this like forging crafting cleric noble warrior person like mm-hmm. you hit all the branches of what? dwarf society you hit the religious I'm, branch I'm the, the, the forging uh, branch the royal branch and definitely after your adventures in the the east of the warrior branch so you kind of like i don't know how much of that has that has spread that maybe i don't get i probably don't get as much uh respect as i feel i'd deserve but uh time will uh ain't that the truth time will solve those things mm-hmm. um yeah i am i'm the the uber dwarf right yes the, 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 per, the perfect dwarf yes you're the panzer dwarf the, what <laughs> 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 um okay so our would would going armored be untoward or is that no, the, that's is that totally the thing? appropriate okay. yeah okay it might be okay. more inappropriate to not go armored actually okay, cool. yeah then yeah then i'll be there in my and it's been a week or whatever, so it's at this point uh, a week without uh, without any you know, real fighting. Mm-hmm. So it's it's polished up, nice and shiny. Mm-hmm. The bronze is shimmering. Mm-hmm. I think I've got my helmet in my lap, even though that's like it's probably odd to carry around. Mm-hmm. I want to bring my halberd too. I want to show off all my cool toys. Hmm. Maybe the helmet's tacky. Maybe I don't bring the helmet, right? It's almost too it's almost too much. I think I've just got my holy so I've got the okay, I've got my so, armor and my holy symbol. The hammer okay. hanging around. Armor, hanging holy symbol, weapons at your side as usual. Uh I don't think I would bring up uh, oh I guess dwarves go everywhere with a battle axe, right? Yeah. I mean the they're buckler, all gonna be the armed. buckler I think like it, it attaches somewhere on my It attaches on my cr- to oh, in a way battle, that it just yeah. sort of blends in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty well armored. Okay. But I think, yeah. Okay. So you come to this thing of Thanes, mm-hmm. finally. And <laughs> hey, I gotta get my, I gotta get in the mood. Don't I, I, underestimate the foreplay, Neil. I would never underestimate the foreplay. Um, so the problem with a lot of DMs is that they they skip the foreplay and try and jump straight to the action, uh, but without the build up, you know, the action's just it's not as good. It's true for all things in life. Um. <laughs> All right. So I do I slip in like with un, unnoticed and I'm just like sitting in uh you're sitting in the lower section of the meeting hall while mm-hmm. the the things are up top chatting. Uh Is it like a long table in like a dining you, hall sort of there thing are or is it three long tables down at the bottom uh mm-hmm. going perpendicular to the one table where all the things are sitting at the top. Okay. I um, okay. 
Yeah. So you're you're sitting down here chatting. It's a do long I have an process. assigned seat or do I just like, no? It's it's just where we and sit. get wherever. Okay. So yeah. I would probably try get my. I would probably be near the front. Sure. You get right, like so in the within, middle seat within, near the front, within you know hearing distance of mm-hmm. the Thane's table. And the Thanes up there are, uh, you know, they're they're half American dwarves. They're very loud. They they make themselves heard throughout the entire room, even when they're whispering. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> And the, the conversation is long and rambling, and they're talking about the, you know, it starts with a half-hour discussion on the, the history of the hobgoblins and the dwarves in this area that everyone here knows by heart, but, you know, you you talk about where the, the history before you get involved with what's coming I, next. And I, I don't know, Neil. Are you trying to gloss over such things, or is this your, well, is your no. opportunity to tell me? Uh, this is my opportunity to tell you, I suppose. So... Dwarves have lived in these hills since before the gods split the world into pieces, or, you know, broke apart Arcadia. Uh, However, all of the above ground structures collapsed when everything split apart and a great many people died. So cities had to be rediscovered or um, resettled. Tharnum was was a small, know-nothing town from a couple thousand years ago that has somehow became a, a, a prominent town, maybe... Uh, 12 or 1300 years ago and Blacksteel Keep came a few hundred years after that Uh, but the hobgoblins have been in these hills probably just as long as the dwarves back when the dwarves were primarily underground the hobgoblins controlled the surface the dwarves controlled the underground and it was fine but as the dwarves came to the surface to find better access to materials to be able to move over land easier because it's hard to move underground yeah like dig tunnels and they collapse it's a bitch no one likes it um there became more and more clashes between hobgoblins and dwarves and over the past I don't know, the last 800 years or so, the dwarves have really solidified their presence on the surface world and pushed the hobgoblins back into a smaller territory and deprived them of some of their original resources. Things have been good for the dwarves for a long time now, but the hobgoblin threat has never, ever faded. They're always attacking something. They're finding lost underground tunnels and popping up in dwarven bases out of the middle of nowhere, uh, sacking things and fleeing again. And your brother is saying it's it's time, you know, to complete the transformation that the last 1500 years have, or last thousand years have uh, been going towards. It's time for the dwarves to truly control the Hendrikos Hills, and we're going to start on the, the west end, and we're going to just get rid of all of these damn hobgoblins. Uh, and then when we're done with that, then we'll talk with the dwarves on the east side of Milfaldur and see if they've got... You know, if they're willing to fight the orcs, and then we can come together and fight the orcs, and we can all conquer the... You know, that's how it goes, and goes for a while. Um, And there's a lot of rousing and cheers, and as your brother starts talking about meeting with the dwarves of Milfaldur, and, you know, after the hobgoblins are done, we'll deal with the orcs, uh, he turns and gestures into the crowd at you and says, to, to preface this, second campaign after we do away with all of these hobby gobbies I would like to send my our seer our speaker of the gods our greatest cleric and my younger brother Zweihard to the dwarf lords of Milfaldur to open discussions about joining forces to eradicate the orcs and eyes turn to you. I, yeah, I think it's one of those moments where all, all you really have time for is to stand and like, right, you sort of been put on the spot. Everyone's probably, they're probably just waiting to applaud, right? They don't want to mm-hmm. hear from me. So I like stand up. Like, yep. <clears throat> I would, you know, I, I would be honored to serve and I like, you know, bow ahead and there's applause and then I sit my ass back down, right? Mm-hmm. It's that sort of thing where I don't really have a say in the matter, right? You get called out in front of the whole thing, and it's just like, yeah, it's like you know, Sensei says, "Ryan, get up and show him how to mambo," and you're like, "Okay, I'm gonna get up and mambo." And starts clapping, and right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe yeah. not. <laughs> this is Dyson with that. The inside jokes between Ryan and I will continue forever. You guys are just gonna have to be on the outside for some of them. I'm sorry, guys. That's where life goes. Um, yeah. yeah. You listen, you listen to us make the same jokes over and over again. Maybe eventually they start to make sense, even if... Uh, I hope no. so. 
I hope so. Uh, so that or, you know, so the, it's just like our D and D campaigns, where you get to insert your own head as uh, as desired. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so okay. the thing finishes up. the The other dwarf lords all agree that this is a great idea. Uh, they're going to go back and they're going to get their troops, and the campaign will start in a, a month. You know, got to say your goodbyes, got to polish up all the weapons and armor, get extra tools, yada yada yada. Sure. Um, so in a month, and, the campaign's going to start. Um, and in the meantime, I'm to uh, journey to Milfaldur to treat with the... Uh, the dwarf is lords it a, Is it a thane? Is it a thane? It's probably many thanes, right? Yeah, so there would be... Dwarf lords of Milfaldur. There's the great thane of Milfaldur, uh, right? So... Well, let's take a look at this map for a moment and talk about dwarven society. Yeah. Hopefully, we can keep this brief. Um, yeah. There Do are... I have a moment at the sorry at the at the after the thing to talk with my brother? Is that like absolutely a thing that happens? Yes. Right. Um, in fact, he'll like even this... approach you to talk about this yeah. mission that he's dropped on you. Yeah. I'll be like, um, I uh, was a bit surprised to uh, at your. Uh, you didn't think I would leave my favorite brother out of all of our great plans, did you? No, you've got a special task. I know it might not be the one that you were hoping for, but you are a special kind of dwarf, and there are great things that you and only you can do for us. I would trust I'm, no one else to, to treat with the dwarf lords in the east. It is... Uh... A, an, uh, a dignified uh, task. I uh, I will do my best to serve you and uh, our clan and the gods uh, honorably. <clears throat> will uh, will I be? Shall I journey alone? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Would it, it would not be more impressive to uh, approach the dwarf lords with the delegation. It certainly would be. However, we'll need every able-bodied dwarf to for this adventure, and I think you showing up without a delegation only serves to underscore how serious we are with this campaign that we have not spared a single man from duty. So you wish to march on the uh, hobgoblins without the help of the uh, other clans? Of course. We here in the West can easily handle the hobgoblins. It's the orcs that are going to be more problematic. They're further away. We'll need the supply lines coming from Milfaldur to begin with to, to fight them. We can't stretch them over the hills that far. Plus, their knowledge of orcish whereabouts uh, will be invaluable to us. Hmm. I nod approvingly. You're very wise, brother. And I maybe will, they'll uh, call me Einhard make... the Wise. <laughs> and I will uh, make my preparations to uh, journey to Milfaldur and treat with the, th with the thanes. And um, hmm. I like. Give a gruff nod and a whatever honorific bow and sure. excuse myself, right? There's probably much uh, much fraternizing amongst old cousins and mm -hmm. whatnot. It's probably oh, I know what I I uh, is that there a banquet that follows or something like that? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the whole thing there was a banquet going on at the time. Yeah. Dwarves are talking yeah. and pointing so think, with legs of meat. And... So I, I like finishing this conversation with my brother. I go over to the uh, to the water cask and I'm like. What's this water doing at a at a at a at a dwarf thing? And I'll like smack it on the top with my hammer and cast a water to wine spell and convert a, <laughs> convert convert the punch into a. Uh, I, I kind of feel like that you're a dwarf, vat so of, vat of dwarven spirits. Yeah, it's it can't be water to wine. It's got to yeah, be yeah, water exactly. to spirits. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. And get um, the party started, and probably don't actually stay super late myself because I'm going to need to start planning, planning right. for the next adventure. It would seem so. You had some uh, dwarven dwarf some... lore you wanted to insert. I think, I, we're, yes. I think we're pretty much done with the party scene, right? Yeah, yeah. So the dwarves are separated into two groups. 
Um, there's the clan that originally founded Keldoram, and there's the clan that originally founded Milfeldur. Uh, and that, this was a long, long, long time ago. Uh, and since then, the dwarves of this area have sort of been split between those two. The dwarves that founded Keldoram later, an offshoot of them, came and founded Tharnam. So they're kind of really the same clan, but distantly related. But, you know, th th this distance is not a big problem for dwarves. Uh, so you've really, really, like, you guys are part of the group of Tharnam, which is really part of the group of Keldoram. So you guys are all sort of one super clan in the west. Well, and dwarves, this is distinct, a distinct ancestry from the uh, dwarf lords in Milfeldur. So these are like yes. two separate and dwarven clans. Yes, two very separate ancient dwarven clans that settled mm -hmm. this area and have since really not crossed. You know, they don't mingle are, too much. Are there names for these clans? Uh, yes, but if you ask me to come up with them right now, it's going to okay, be. You don't have kind of. Can yeah. we get names of you should have, you have names of like the lords of these cities though right like who's who's the lord of Milfaldur at the moment right you have that oh, I assume maybe, maybe. Well, why don't, you want to would you mind taking a peek at your at your docs and seeing what you do have right because there's Milfaldur there's Tharnam and there's Keldoram right I am opening my documents right now uh, la 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 I have no such things. I never okay, got this so far. No. All right, cool. Yep. Well, maybe at some point, if if I live long enough, you can uh, you can sort that out on one of your prep streams. But for mm -hmm. now, two dwarf clans. Right. A tale of a tale of two clans. A tale of two clans. Yes, Works definitely. Well uh, and these clans are also quite separate from the dwarves that might have lived uh, in anywhere else on the on the continent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We probably think we trace our ancestries back to the mountain you know, the mountain door, you know, all this, maybe, right? Are the, yeah, are... a long, long time ago, you guys left the mountains and became right, the hill dwarves was... here. Um, you guys are basically the only hill dwarves in Arcadia. Not really the only, but this is the, like, the concentration of hill dwarves. If you talk about hill dwarves, you're talking about the people in and around the Hemdorkas Hills. There are yeah. other hilly dwarves, but they're... Most of, many of them probably came from here, right? We're like outcast clans or your right, right or right or, or clans that or went to nomadic ex dwarves that wandered away from here where they were probably we're like the hill dwarves that can trace our lineage back to before the breaking right of the world right 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 um the, and the I, other and I, group of hill dwarves would be the ones in hillsborough uh but you really would hesitate to even call them hill dwarves they're they live in an entire above the ground city that's half populated with humans um, Where, it's over near Redport. Oh, I feel like we talked about You've that. You've been to Hillsborough before. With other characters, with yeah. With other characters, yeah. Um, and they're sort of hill dwarves. Are, you would consider them like open above the world dwarves because they live in like an entirely above the ground city that's mixed with humans. And they originally came from your group over here. Um, Ooh, yeah, they're originally part of the Milfeldur group. Mm -hmm. Um and they live near a mountain, but they don't live in the but mountain. They, prob they probably got. What is there a term for when you get too close to humans and you just integrate into human society and lose your lose your dwarfdom? I don't know. There's get probably my... a term, but I think that the the better way of doing it is you just don't talk about them. Like <laughs> they just cease to exist as important dwarves in your ideology. You know. Sure. Fair enough. All right. Until um, they awkwardly come up at Thanksgiving. And you're like, oh shit, those guys are right. Uh, anyway. So let's clear this stuff. Um, let's figure out what sort of preparations you want for your trip to Milfeldur, and then we'll take yeah. our first break, and then we'll come back and get into Adventure it. Adventure on. So I'm going to need another goat, for sure. Yes. Goat um, the second has been acquired. Uh, yeah. Uh, and how would you like to get to Milfaldur? Uh, Are you going to venture across the high hills for weeks until you reach the place? Or will um, you is try there another and take way? a Well, you could take a boat. You could go down to Confluence and then to High Castle and take a boat. Or you could hike across the hills to Blue Cliff or hike across the hills to Keldoram and take a boat. Um, there's a lot of ways to get there. Uh, 
Um, well, we're definitely not taking a boat. What do you think I am? Excellent. All right. Across the hills it is. Yeah. So I'm thinking to cut over land, and I'll probably decide and I, when I go whether I will just... I probably will just do a straight shot. But I'll think about how to navigate this Hemdercross River when I get there, or the valley. We can, we can talk more about that later. I'm sure you've got lore to insert everywhere. All, all the lore, all the, all the, all the lore, all the dwarf lore. Yes. Um, so to prepare, I mean, I'll get a goat and rations, but otherwise, I think I'm probably just gonna just trek across just, the hills. Just, just, just do this thing. Perfect. Um, We're gonna take our first break right here. Then, yeah, I'm gonna go good. double down on my coffee. So the break might be a little bit longer because I got to make coffee. Uh, so we'll be back in like ten minutes, eight to ten minutes. Alrighty. See you on the other side. <laughs> 